let us remain standing just a moment for prayer. All these last meetings always just gets next to me. Somehow when we find one another and learn to get acquainted why, and just begin to a fellowship, then it's time to go somewhere else. It always gives me a little sad feeling. But looking on ahead, I'm looking for the day that when we'll all meet again and we'll be in a place, perhaps, if Jesus comes before we meet on earth again, where we'll never, never part no more. I wonder how many would like to be remembered to God this afternoon as we raise our hands in prayer. The Lord bless you. And shall we bow our heads just a moment? Almighty God, the creator of heavens and earth, and the author of everlasting life, and the giver of every good gift, we come in the shadows of thy mercy by prayer, through the name of Jesus thy Son, to offer to thee our thanksgiving for this great Tulsa meeting, for what it has meant to us, a place in our heart that we shall never forget of these fine people, though thy Holy Spirit in them, what fellowship it has been, a little touch of heaven in our lives, an experience that we never shall forget. We pray, Father, that your Spirit will always remain in these people. May from the essence of this little gathering cause a revival to break out in every church throughout the country. May great signs and wonders be accomplished. We pray, Lord, that you'll grant these things. Laying here on this desk this afternoon is handkerchiefs and little pieces of goods that's going to the sick and the afflicted. Almighty God, I pray thee in Jesus' name that whoever these touches that's sick, may they be healed. Not only is my own prayer, Father, but the prayer of this great auditorium full of Christians this afternoon. We offer it with one accord for those who are needy. Lord, we pray that you'll bless us in the further exercises of this day. We pray for the churches tonight. May there just be glory and joy unspeakable in every church. Give us a great outpouring of thy presence this afternoon. May the Holy Spirit come into the Word, and may the Word become in our flesh and dwell here with us this afternoon. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. You be seated. To each and every minister, to all of the workers, the custodian, and to the ushers and all, for myself and my crew, Brother David, Brother Roy, Billy Paul, Lois, Brother Fred Softman, Brother Jim McGuire, Brother Gene and Leo, we all want to thank you all for your kindness and what you have meant to us in this meeting. You've certainly been so nice, such a respect and love that we have gathered in our hearts for you. It'll never be rubbed out. It's indelible. And we are trusting that God will give you the exceeding abundantly above all that you could even think or ask for. May God give it to you in the riches of his Son's grace, Jesus Christ. Brother Tommy Osborne, he's here in the meeting. The Lord God be with Brother Tommy. Brother Oral started this afternoon, and I think sprung a ligament of something loose in his leg, and as soon as the service is over, I'm on my road to pray for him. And now, to all Brother Robert's staff and Brother Tommy's staff and to the churches and all, God be with you is my prayer. You'll, you'll always be in my heart for this time. And long may Tulsa stand, long may the work of God remain in it, is our prayers. And we hope to be back again sometime with you. And if we can ever be a favor to you in any way, I used to make this statement. 
The night never gets too dark or the rain never falls too hard. But what we would do anything that lays in our power to make life a little more comfortable and blessed to you. If we can be any help to you, just let us know. Just call us at Jeffersonville, Indiana, Butler 21519, or just call me at Jeffersonville. We can send you a prayer cloth, pray for you. Just anything that we can do, we are your servants in the Lord. So it's probably bad to come to the end of a service like this and when you were having such a wonderful time, but sometime we have to go anyhow, knowing this, that just across the river, someday when life is all over and I sit at that great table, it'll be spread through the skies, a wedding supper, and we look across the table from one another, we'll remember these times at Oakland. No doubt a little tear might trickle down our cheek for joy, and the king and all of his beauty will come out in his lovely white robe, wipe all tears from her eyes and say, don't cry no more. It's all over now. Enter into the joys of the Lord, which has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. That's the hour I live for. I look down across my cooperating ministers here and see many of them older than I. Probably out here on the street with a guitar and a tambourine, a paved in the way, putting down the cobblestones and smoothing out the rough places that this ministry that the Lord has given me might ride smooth down the road. My precious brethren, I feel little to stand up here and you down there. That is right. If there's any honor to be given, it goes to you. May God ever richly bless you. That day when the reward's given out, I hope to be standing present when I've seen you crowned in his glory. A few moments ago, I was talking to a minister back there. His name was Brother Nathan, he said. He works among the Jews. And he said, Brother Bram, the first night when you were here, him and his wife, she was sick, and said, you called out in the meeting and told me who I was and about my wife and her sickness. said she's been getting well ever since, just doing fine. And so many fine letters and testimonies. Now, maybe you didn't get your handkerchief in here. If we can help you in any way, send you a little cloth. Now, there'll be a little farm. We got a prayer list that goes around the world. People get up at all hours through the night to keep this prayer list. Ever on the Eastern Standard Time, we pray at 9 o'clock at morning, at 12 o'clock, and at 3 o'clock. That's the sacrifice hours of the Old Jewish Testament. And we pray that, and people around the world gets up at different times in a great ch prayer chain that we all pray together, one for the other. So I'm sure God will hear prayer. Such marvelous things come in that he has done. And we want to put you on our prayer list to pray with us at those hours. And now, no doubt, but pretty shortly, I'll be overseas again, the Lord willing. We accumulate a little finance here. And by the way, the Lord let me say that so I can remember They've taken two love offerings, I believe, for me. You know how I appreciate that. Now, not one cent will go personally to me. It goes into the church foundation for overseas missions. See, And we'll do the very best that we can to see that that money goes to people who can't hear the gospel, not able to come. And we'll do our very best. God ever richly bless you is my sincere prayer. And now, if you want one of these prayer cloths, just write to me. And just post office box 325 or just Jeffersonville, Indiana, it'll come to me. And if you want to keep it in your Bible, put it in Acts 19. And so many people have told me. One lady said, I believe her son had got run over by an automobile. And he was bleeding to death from an injury from glass. And so she ran real quick and got this ribbon. She was in, lived in the country and put the little ribbon on the boy and the blood stopped immediately. And many things like that. A woman in Germany paralyzed. It tells you what to do. Gather in your Christian neighbors when these claws are put up on you over your heart. And she said after everything had been done just the way it was, she'd been paralyzed for several years. And said when she got that fulfilled, she said, Satan, now you have no more room for anything else. Get out of me. Got up out of the chair and walked away. It's just that simple. See? So... If you would wish one, it's without cost, without price. Just send and we'll send it right straight to you in the mail. Now you'll get a, a mimograph sheet on how to do it. But remember, I have prayed myself personally over the, over the cloth will be sent you.
if my baby was sick, my wife or my father and mother, and I had confidence in somebody's prayer, I wouldn't want it to be the secretary's prayer. I would want them to pray over it. And do unto others as you'd have others do unto you, the golden rule. So we, we'll certainly be glad to help you in any way that we can. God ever bless you now. And everything that's been done has been done so sweetly and lovely, and we just appreciate it so much. Now, when I'm overseas, it's always hard because witches and wizards, and they're not afraid to attack you. Here just recently in a certain place, there was about 15 witches on each side throwing a spell across and said they'd call a storm and it'd blow me away. And believe it or not, the storm came. About 30,000 people in the place shaking just as hard as they could. Brother Argenbright, the Christian businessman, and you brethren know him, he was sitting behind me. He said, Brother Branham, I said, just sit still. The Holy Spirit sent me here. That's the reason I don't go no place unless he sends me first. Then I know I can come in the name of the Lord. And I said, he sent me here. And they had a great big place built just uh, where they're just like two befores and canvas tacked over it. And that place is just raising up and down. Right in the, about two o'clock in the afternoon, just as clear as it could be. And that storm came up in 30 minutes. And I just stopped and I said, you don't have to interpret this. Feel that evil power from either side. And I'm sitting there turning their hands with a cut feather with the scissors. You know how they do. And I said, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, you was the one sent me here. You're responsible for the ministry that I carry for you. I rebuke that storm in the name of the Lord Jesus and just parted right back. The thunders roared away and the sun was shining less than two minutes right down. And thousands rushed to the altar. And of communistic thinkers and everything. And how I can't stand here and tell you testimonies because in my own meeting, it would be better that the others do it. But library, I'd say there'd be an encyclopedia. There could be so many books written that I have seen the Lord Jesus do in my own little ministry. Why do you think it would be in such man as Brother Tommy Osborne, Brother Oral Roberts? It's great. Our Lord is great. It certainly is. Now, I want to read some scripture this afternoon, and I've got a few places written down here if I get to it, and then we're, I believe my son told me that he gave out some prayer cards, and we're going to pray for the sick. If I never lay eyes on any of you all again, if I never see you in this life, when I meet you at that gate before we go in to stand before Christ, the visions from God are true and real. The angel of the Lord in that pillar of fire and light, so help me the Almighty God, my judge, it's there. Amen. It's true. Yeah. So that you'll know that it's, it's true. God is true. He cannot be false and be God. He is false. He cannot be false because he has to be real. If anything's false, it's Satan. But that light, I have seen it, looked at it, and to me, huh, please forgive me if I'm acting sacrilegious, but to me, it's the same pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel because it was dwelt in a man called Jesus, which was the Son of God, and the life that he lived is produced again today by the same thing. He said, I come from God, I go to God. We all know that. I came from God and I go to God. He said, I am the I am. That was the pillar of fire. That was the angel that was in the bush. It was made flesh and dwelt among us, returned back, and it's in the same form today. Did you know that? Well, you say, Jesus was, well, I'm, not, I'm talking about God that was in Jesus. When Paul was on his road to Damascus, a light struck him down. A pillar of fire, none of the rest of them saw it, but Paul saw it. It was so much that it blinded him. And he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. He had returned back to God where he came from. To me, it's him again today, finishing out his works in we the church in the last days. Let's turn to Deuteronomy 32, 11. For a little background of a text, and we'll try to have the prayer line and out within an hour if possible. Oh, 
Oh, Father God, how humbly in my heart I accept that. Guide my feet, hold my hand, Lord. May I never become a stumbling block to anyone, but may I be a stepping stone to an ever wayfaring traveler. Grant it, Lord. May I never do nothing in my life that would put a shadow on your name or on your cause. And I'll do all that I can to serve you. I thank you for this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. How that humbles my heart. Deuteronomy 32, 11. As an... Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How we thank the Lord. To have his spirit working among us in the midst of us. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. That's not very much of a scripture reading, but it's the word of the Lord. It's enough there that maybe God will give us a context from this in the next 20 or 30 minutes that will cause people to wake up and to think of the Lord Jesus. You know, sometime I read a story a few years ago in the life of Abraham Lincoln. There was a man in prison, and he was under a federal charge, and he was going to be shot. And a good friend of his went to the president, Abraham Lincoln, a wonderful Christian man. And he said, Mr. Lincoln, I know that you are a good man, that you are a Christian, and under this federal indictment, that this man has trespassed a law of the regulation of the army. He is my friend. He didn't mean to do that. He's guilty of doing it. He didn't mean to do it. Won't you please? You're the only man who can spare his life. Won't you spare his life? And the courtesy of Mr. Lincoln picked up his quill and wrote across a piece of paper because he wasn't at his desk at that time to make an official stamp. And so he wrote across it, I... Pardon this man and signed his name Abraham Lincoln. The precious friend of this man run just as hard as he could to the prison and said, Oh, my friend, you are free. You are free. Here is the president's name on this piece of paper. You are pardoned. And the man said, Do not mock me, for I am ready now to die because I am sentenced to death. And here you come to mock me with a piece of paper. If that piece of paper was Abraham Lincoln's uh, pardon, it would be all decorated up with seals and so forth. He said, Sir, this is the president's name. You are pardoned. And the man turned his back on it and would not listen to it. The next morning at daylight, the man was shot before a firing squad. 
Now, here's a pardon from the president that says, do not kill the man signed on one day. The next day, the man was shot. Then the case was tried in federal court. And when the court, the federal court of the United States of America tried the case, and here was the decision of the court. A pardon is not a pardon unless it be received as a pardon. That's the way that the Word of God is. It's healing to you if you receive it as healing. It's a pardon to you if you receive it as a pardon. Every blessing in here is yours if you receive it in the way that God has wrote it. As the eagle stirreth her nest, fluttereth over her young, taketh them on her wings, and beareth them. How many times have I thought what God likened his heritage to eagles. And I find in the Bible that God calls himself an eagle. He's Jehovah eagle. And how would he do that? So I am a naturalist, so I, my first Bible was nature. If you just watch the way nature works, you can find God. Anywhere you look, you'll see God if you get God in the heart and watch it. Now, when they talk of reincarnation and stuff, that's foolish. It cannot be. We find out that a plant dies, goes into the ground, the seed rots, it lives again. It's resurrection. And all Christianity is based upon resurrection. And we can see that that's true. Death, burial, resurrection. The summers, the winters, all nature blends right in. My first Bible was watching how those trees die how the sprouts come up again, how the wind would blow it over, it would come back again, how the little flower died, lived again, and all those different things, it made me know that there was a power of resurrection somewhere. Now, the tree has perpetual life. We have immortal life. The tree will come to its final end. We never can. We have immortal life. Now, I begin to study the eagle when I uh, read this. What about the eagle? I find out that the eagle is a very odd bird. He can fly higher than any other bird that there is. He's a special built bird. He builds his neck, nest in the rocks way up high. He's a very odd bird. And another thing, his feathers are so tight you can hardly, you can't pull them out with a pair of pliers. He's a huge mammoth bird, one of the biggest there is. And he's a, a very odd bird, but he's Built special because he has a special work to do. The word eagle means ripper with the beak. And he feeds with the beak. A very beautiful thing of the word of God. Feeds from mouth to mouth. God feeding his children. And then he builds his nest high. And he has that for a purpose in everything. Now, if the eagle had a great powerful wings, that's for deliverance. And another thing the eagle does, it's strange, he renews his youth. The eagle, after so long a time, just rotates and comes right back to a young eagle again. Brings himself right back. He renews his youth. That's another type of the church of God's people. We'll get all down and kind of stale. And all at once, the Holy Spirit comes and renews us again. God renewing the experience and the youth of his church. Giving him a new experience. That is a type of the eagle. Some years ago, I used to do a lot of riding, ranch, and we was up on Troublesome River in Colorado. The Hereford Association grazes that uh, uh, Raffetal uh, pastures there and so forth and up around on the mountains. And we used to take the cattle up there and then fall the year, we'd have to hunt them out again, put them on the national forest, and then we'd raise her hay down in the bottoms to feed out through the winter. And I go out there each year to hunt. I do yet. And a friend of mine, we go back after all the people from the cities got down there and shot around the does and fawns and young cows and old straggling bulls of the elks. It's down low while we always go way back high where you can't get in and camp out back there. He takes the east, east or west fork one, and I'll take the other. We'll be several days before we meet one another. Now, I'll never forget one year it hadn't snowed. It was long in October when the season come in. 
And if it snows up in the mountains, why, maybe in October it'll come a, a real pretty afternoon. Maybe in another hour it'll be snowing, then it'll rain it off, and then the sun will come out, just changing weather. But then when the, the snow comes, it runs the elk and the deer, those big ones that stay high away from the noise of the civilization, it runs them down into the valleys. That's where you usually get the trophy. This year, the snows hadn't come yet, and I was way up high, and I'd left my horse several miles behind and tied him up so he'd have plenty of room, some hay, so he could eat, and I went all the way up around Timberline, up in there looking. That afternoon, there come a storm sweeping across the mountains and, and a roaring of thunder and lightning of flashing. And I got behind a tree, and I stood back behind the tree till the storm was over, dropped down into the timber. There had been a blow down there. And I was standing behind the timber, waiting till the storm passed, standing there thinking, and I had my rifle setting just against the, the tree. And then when the, the storm was over, I was thinking about God, how wonderful He was. And while the storm was going on, the cold wind set in. And it froze much of the water on the evergreens, like a sickles a-hanging. Then when the sun came out, way back over in the west, I could see the sun just peeping through the crevice of the mountain. And it looked like the eye of God. You know, God's everywhere. You can just see Him anywhere. If you just look for Him. He's there. You have to see Him. He'll be here. He's here right now. If you just look around, you'll see Him. And then... When I was uh, standing there, I looked at that, that sunset, and I raised up my hands, and I said, Oh, great Jehovah God, your eyes run to and fro through the earth. Just then, I heard the bugle from a, a bull elk. He got scattered away from the herd in the storm, and he was making that real sharp squeal of a sound like that. And I heard the herd answering over here in another place. And way up on the side of the mountain, the old gray wolf began to howl. And mate answered down in the bottom. I looked around across the valley from one mountain across the divide. There was a rainbow. Why, just everywhere I looked, there was God. My mother is a half Indian. She come off the reservations and the Cherokee Indian. And her mother drawed a pension. My conversion never took that out of me. There's something about the woods and outdoors that I love. When I heard that old wolf howling and the mate answering it, tears began to run down my cheeks. I heard that old bull elk screaming up there for he's heard. It answered. I looked at the rainbow and I said, yeah, there's God again. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the colors of covenant in the rainbow. God's everywhere if you'll just look around for him. I got so happy, I just raised up my hands and the tears running down my cheeks. I run around and around and around that tree. I was just having me a big time. Nobody in 30 miles of me just jumping up and down and screaming to the top of my voice. Honestly, if there'd been somebody watching me, they'd thought somebody out of the insane institution is out there. But I wasn't caring. I was having a good time. I was worshiping the Lord, my God. It didn't make any difference to me what anybody else thought. And I was just having a good time, just around and around and around that tree. And I'd stop, listen to that wolf, and listen to that, and scream again and around and around the tree. I'd go again. And I, I excited something, and there was a little pine squirrel. I don't know whether you know what they are here Oklahoma or not, just a little bitty noisy thing about that long. He's the blue coat policeman of the woods. He just, he makes so much noise and there's nothing to him. And he jumped up on a stump and he began to chatter, chatter, chatter just as hard as he could. And I thought, there's no need of you getting excited. I'm worshiping the Lord. You don't like that? Watch this. And around and around and around and around again, I went just as hard as I could. And I said, isn't that wonderful? Your Creator, my God. Here we go again, around and around and around, like that. And I noticed the little fella cocking his little head sideways and looking down, and that blowdown. It didn't seem like it. I'd excited him. There's something else excited him. Well, I thought, don't think I'm acting funny because I'm not acting funny to myself, and I know he's a blessing me. So you might as well join right in with me. And so I happened to look, and the storm had forced the big eagle down. And he had forced him down in. He had been down low, probably eating. He couldn't get his gain his above to get above the storm, so it forced him down into the bushes. And there he was down around these, these bushes here, and that's what was exciting the little squirrel. 
And he was watching it real close like that, going chatter, 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 like he's going to tear that eagle to pieces. Well, he wasn't big enough to tear nothing to pieces. So he's standing on that stump, his little tail curled up like that, and he's chatter, 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 chatter. I thought, well, don't get excited. He ain't going to hurt you. And that big eagle jumped out on a limb like that. And I thought, oh, God, there you are in that wolf call. There you are over here in the call of the wild. There you are in the sunset. There you are in the rainbow. Why did you put that eagle before me? What, what's that eagle doing there? I can't see you in that eagle. I watched that eagle. I said, looked at him, his great big gray looking eyes. He wasn't noticing that pine squirrel so much. He was watching me. I could see those great big eyes watch me. And I thought, well, yeah, I can see God in that eagle because that he's not afraid. There's something about him and he's not afraid. I said, I'll try and see if he's afraid. I said, say, fella, you know I could shoot you? I said, this is my rifle. I could shoot you. He just looked up at me like that. I kept noticing him feeling his wing. I said, I see now. That's the reason. You're not afraid because if God gave you two wings. And you know good and well you could be in that timber there before I could even get that rifle in my hand. I thought, if you could trust your God-given wings to get out of danger, how much more are the church with a God-given spirit of the Holy Ghost among us to get away from things, get out of it? Like a, I watched him, how he felt them wings. As long someone said to me one time, Brother Branham, aren't you afraid you'll make a mistake? No, sir, not as long as I can feel that something around me. That's all right. Uh, that's okay. As long as he's there, it's him a-doing it. And I watched the eagle for a length of time. And he seen that I loved him too much. I wasn't going to hurt him. And so he wasn't afraid of me, but he just got nauseated with that chatter, 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 chatter. And he got tired of it, so he just made one great big jump, flopped his wings about twice, and then I see why he broke in on me shouting. That big eagle never flopped his wings anymore. He just seemed to know how to set his wings. And every time the wind would come in, he'd ride up higher. And the wind would come in, he'd ride higher. And I stood there and watched him until he'd become just a little bitty speck. And I said, oh, God, that's it. He got tired of that chatter, chatter, chatter. It isn't run from church to church, jarring this one and jarring that one. It's just knowing how to set your wings in the power of his Holy Spirit when he comes riding in, just ride on, ride on, 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 on. Get out away from this chatter, chatter. Days of miracles is past. No such a thing as the Holy Ghost. You're all wrong in this. There ain't no such a thing as divine healing. Just ride on above it. Just let the Holy Ghost ride in and ride on away. Just carry on way up and above. Come out of hearing distance. My, God made the eagle. Now, if he didn't have, if the hawk tried to follow the eagle, he'd disintegrate in the air. A crow tried to follow him, the feathers would fall out of him. He's a special made bird. God likened his eagles unto his prophets. A prophet rides high into the spheres where he can look way away. Now, if the eagle has got a great powerful wings that can take him up there and his eyes isn't compared with his wings, he'd be blind when he got up there. That's the reason the hawk trying to become an eagle when he got so high he couldn't see anyhow. So it wouldn't do him no good to climb up. See, he's a special made bird. And a Christian is a special made person. It's exactly right. There's no need of going to church unless you got something that tells you that it's all there. See, it's something special that God does for you. That eagle can go so high that you can't see him, and he can see anything moving on the ground, the least little object. His eye is so great. Some time ago, three or four years ago, my little girl and I were walking up at the zoo at Cincinnati. I had him up there one Saturday afternoon, showing him the different things. And little Sarah and I walked down. She was a little bitty girl then, just about three years old. And we were walking around, and there was a big eagle in the cage. And I always hated to see animals caged up. I don't know. I just hate to see a canary bird. Now, I'm not throwing off on your parakeets and things, but I don't like to see anything in a cage. I know how it is to be caged up in a religion where you ain't got no freedom. I, 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 I want to, I, I like to be free. Um, well, it's just like giving your canary bird all the vitamins you can to make good feathers and good wings and then keeping him in a cage. What good does it do him? What good does it do to send preachers away to seminaries and so forth and educate them and everything like that and then cage them up by saying the days of miracles is past? There is no such a thing. What good does it do to educate them? The, Brother, I like something free where you can fly and exercise yourself. A religion that lets you get free. 
I noticed this big eagle. They had just caught him, put him in the cage. And I thought that was the most saddest sight I ever seen. That great big fella, he's laying there on the floor when I got up. His great big wings laying out. The feathers was all beat off his head and around his neck and over the ends of his wings. I looked at him. He crawled across the cage. He looked back across the cage like that. Here he come. And he hit that cage with his head and wings just flopping. The feathers would fly. He'd fall back. He'd get up again. He got back this way. He would look up. And he'd fly just as hard as he could and hit his wings and head against it and fall back. He laid there in his big eyes rolling around looking up. Oh, I thought that's one of the saddest sights a man could look at. He's a heavenly bird. He was born to soar the heavens. And here, by the trickery and devices of man, he's caged up. He can't, he's a heavenly bird. He knows nothing about the ground, Harley. He's got to live in the heavens, laying there looking up where he really ought to be, where his heart longs to be, but these bars between him and that. I thought that was a sad sight until one time I saw mankind that God created in his image caged into denominations and things that didn't believe in divine healing caged into places where they couldn't be free. There are heaven-born, God-sent spirits in them like that, but caging them up so they can't get out. See men and women walking on the streets, immorally dressed in saloons, caged down where they should be free, sons and daughters of God, and beat their brains out nearly against something, trying to get free. Oh, God, if I'd have had the power out of or the authority out of bought that old eagle and let him go. Let him go free where he wants to. That's a horrible thing to cage him up. But how horrible it is to take the sons of God and to cage them into a place the where they're really their spirits wants to get out there and do something. Then somebody says there is no such a thing as divine healing. There is no such a thing as the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no such a thing as this. Puts them in a cage, brother. Let me tell you. There is a freedom. One time a man caught an old crow and tied him up because he's in the cornfield. And, he, and the birds begin to fly over and saying, come on, Johnny Crow, let's go south. Let's go south. The wintertime's coming. He got so poor he couldn't hardly walk. There's a good man came by one day and said, that poor old crow, and just cut him loose. And when he did, the other crows come over and said, come on, Johnny Crow, let's go south. But he, he had been tied so long until he just walked around and said, I can't do it. I can't do it. He didn't know he was free. That's the way man is today. You don't know that Jesus Christ made you free, brother. Let's get out of it. Let's get somewhere. God made us free. Don't starve to death. God's got Pentecostal blessings all through the skies and, and untapped resources of his goodness. Let's get to it. Whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. Drink from the waters of life freely. The eagle, he builds his nest high in the rock. He's like, a, he's like the church. The church of Jesus Christ is a church that's set on a hill that gives light. It's high. It's got high ambitions. It ought to have high expectations. Expectations, rather. It should have high expectations because we've been expecting God to do something. If you come here this afternoon saying, well, I'll go up. If I get in the prayer line, all right. Well, if he'll tell me that I'm well, if the Lord let me know, I... Oh, don't have expectations like that. But if you don't do it, then I won't get nothing. Your expectations is not much. Come to the church this afternoon if you're sick. Say, I'm expecting to go home well. I'm not going to leave till it happens. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost, say, I'll stay here and rot in this place or I'll get the Holy Ghost. I come here amongst Holy Ghost people. I come here where the Spirit's at. I'll stay right here till I get it. Be like old buddy Robinson was when he got out in the cornfield. He said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost when you come back to earth, you'll find a pile of bones of buddy Robinson laying right here. That's the way to do it. It's exactly. We take it too haphazardly. A man one time was trying to seek God. And every time he'd say, I'm saved, the devil say, no, you're not. And one day he drove down a stake. He said, Satan, from this on, I'll point to this stake. This is a place where I met God's requirements right here. You drive your stake down right beside of your seat this afternoon. Saying, Satan, right, cheers, wherever doubts go to lay, and I'm going to fly away with him this afternoon. I'm going to accept exactly what he told me I could do. If you'll believe it, this old eagle, when she gets ready to build her nest, she goes way high in the rocks, and she builds her nest high because she's got, she wants to protect her little ones. That's the way God does. He lifts his church into a place if you just let him. 
And he'll put you into a place where you'll be away from the vultures of the earth. Certainly he will. How much different is it from the chicken? The chicken's a bird too. But he builds his nest out in the barnyard somewhere, down on the ground where weasels and snakes and everything else can get his young. He don't know nothing about the heavenly. Yet he's a bird, maybe a denominational brother, but he's, but he's, he's on the ground. He don't know nothing about the heavenly. He's flying high somewhere way up there where it's blue and pretty. The old mother eagle, when she makes her nest, how I've watched them many times, go out and get the big sticks and put them down into them rocks and pull it over here with her big beak and tie it down and take briar vines and tie it around. And the inside of the nest is made of briars, mostly to tie the big uh, kind of a poles like together that she packs up there. But she anchors that nest so there's no storm can blow it away. I'm glad. Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. What kind of a rock? A spiritual revelation. Who does man say I the son of man am? Some say Elias, some say Moses, but what about you? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Blessed art thou, Simon, the son of Jonas. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. You never learned this in a seminary. You never learned this by somebody telling you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. The storms of life will never shake it. That's the reason he said he was an eagle. He built the nest. Then the old mother eagle, making ready for her little ones to be born, she goes out and she gets everything that she can, soft leaves. She takes her big beak and puts them back in the corners and fixes up all the stickers around so they won't stick the little ones. She goes out and gets her a lamb or either a rabbit or something, eats the meat of it, and then takes the, the hair, the fur off of it, and daubs the nest up. Oh, she makes it real pretty for her little ones to come. That's the way Jehovah Eagle does, too. He just fixes it all up. So, oh, my, when the new baby's born, why, in the kingdom of God, he just, he thinks he can walk, but he's always bumping up and down and running around, but he's having a good time. He's in the nest where it's all feathered, you know. The, the falls don't hurt. And so that's the way Mother Jehovah Eagle does. She fixes her nest real uh, fluffy and nice and for her little ones that's going to be born. After a while, the eggs come. Along comes the little eagle, and she goes down her and Papa Eagle, and they feed all their little ones till they get pretty good size. Then when they get to a certain size, now Mama Eagle is going to be positive if them eagles ain't going to be anything like chickens. That's right. Amen. She don't want them earthbound. They're eagles, and she knows they're eagles. That's the way Jehovah Eagle does. He don't want us chicken, barnyard chickens. He wants us to be eagles up in the blue, the nature of us, to be up there where we're free. He who the Son has made free is free indeed. There, wants them up there. So a few days, how I've watched them so many times, a few days before the nest stirring time comes, the old mother eagle will get up there on the side of that nest. I've laid them any day in the warm sunshine, watch them, and just cry like a baby. See that big mother eagle? They're large. The mother eagle's bigger than the father eagle. Some of their wings spread 14 feet from tip to tip. And she'll get up there. She'll strut around over that nest like that. And she'll go up to these little ones. She'll spread her great big wings and scream. And when she does, sometimes the little eagles will fall on their back. She wants them to. That's what she wants them to do. Then they'll get up. And she'll scream. Why? She's training them to her voice. And my sheep know my voice. She wants them to know what it is when screaming time comes. And she's screaming. Oh, my. I want you to catch every note of my voice, she says, because there's a lot of scavengers. I want you to know you're eagles. And I want you to know eagle voice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know what an eagle sound is. Then she spreads her great wings. She says, looky here, I'm fixing to give you your first solo flight. But first, I want you to look how big I am. Oh, how sweet it is. Maybe sometimes sickness knocks us on her back. Maybe something else, when we can look up and take them two big wings of Jehovah, the Old and New Testament, and say, how great thou art. How great thou art, Lord. Oh, she likes to show him. Look at here how strong I am. She screams. This is my voice. And how could a preacher say then that that eagle don't scream the same in every day? Every time it screams. Sure, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The Old Testament said, I am Jehovah. 
I opened up the Red Sea. I brought the Hebrew children out of the fiery furnace. I'm the one that raised up the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the one that sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, looking through her great wings. Don't you like to see that? Doesn't it thrill your heart? Then little eagles say, oh, mama, we sure trust you. You're powerful and big. Go out some night and look up at the solar system. Here some time ago, I was taken up to Mount Palmer. And there through a glass, you can see 120 million years of light space. Figured up how many miles it is. I mean, how fast does light travel? And 120 million years of light space. And beyond that was still moons and stars and worlds. How great thou art! How great thou art! These little eagles begin to look around. How great thou art! Here's a flower. It died. It went into the ground. But here it comes back again. How great thou art! Here's a poor old cancer-ridden man just a shadow and a prayer is made over him. Next thing you see him, a great big red-faced man. How great thou art! How great thou art! See a little old woman out on the street out there not fit for the dogs to look at. Let the power of God catch her attention one time. She'll scream, How great thou art! She'll lay aside every weight in the sin that's easily beset her. The first thing you know, she's a sainted-looking person. She's out with a gospel track under her arm doing something. Let that bootlegger down on the corner, that foul man, let him one time look up and see how great thou art. Watch him quit selling his whiskey, quit drinking and smoking his cigarettes and cigars. Quit telling his lies and so forth. And out on the street with a Bible in his hand, testifying to the glory of God. How great thou art. Let God spread forth that new and old testament over you one time. Look through its pages and see what it is. You'll hear a voice screaming from there saying, The same yesterday, today, and forever. What I did for them, I'll do for you. I'm, I am the same. I'm Jehovah. I change not. I feel real religious right now. Oh, my, how well I know it is the truth. Now, the mother is determined them little eagles are not going to be chicken. But she's determined that they not be. You know what she does then? After she struts up and down on the nest and spreads her, say, Look here, honey, how great I am. See here, you've got to trust me. I'm going to take you somewhere where you'll have to trust me. How do I know that God hasn't sent some sick people in here this afternoon the same way? Put you to a place where the doctor, you say, I'm a Christian. Brother Branham, I know it. And I've got the Holy Ghost, and here I am suffering. How do you know that Jehovah is just not trying to get you to look through the wings and see how great he is? Great. How great I am. I'm going to do something for you that you'll have to trust me. There you are. But I want you to know what you're trusting in first. See my great wings? And then after a few days, you know what that mother does? As long as that bed is made soft, them little old eagles don't want to leave it. It's right. You know what she does? Then she gets right in there and takes her bill and rips every bit of that fur out of there and throws it out of the nest. She's determined that they'll not get customized to the world. That's right. That's what God does sometimes. Oh, you think about everything big and everything swanky and everything. Don't look for that. Why, you're a million miles from Pentecost. The Pentecostal people didn't look for easy things. They sold what they had and gave to the poor and went out with Christ alone. The day we have to loan a fleet of Cadillacs before we're spiritual. What's happened? Something's wrong somewhere. Me, let me take the way with the Lord despised you. I started in with Jesus, Lord. Take me through under any circumstance. Amen. The people are afraid of the new birth. That's what's the matter. They're afraid to be born again. Anybody knows that any birth, I don't care where it is, it's a mess. If it's in a pig pen or if it's in a straw stack or if it's in a pink decorated hospital room, a birth is a mess. And people don't want to get messy. But I'm telling you, I don't want to meet God on my part. I want to meet the new birth on God's level. I don't care if I have to cry, squall, speak in tongues, whatever I have to do. I don't care how many neighbors talk about me. Let me be born again. I don't care what kind of a condition I have. If I have to spar all the reputation, I don't have any anyhow. That's one thing I didn't have to leave. I had no prestige or reputation. I was just a hillbilly to start with. So I had nothing, but I, I, I don't care what it is. I'm ready to lose anything and become a fool for the kingdom of God's sake. You want to call me a holy roller or a spiritist or a devil or a mind reader? I don't care what they say. I want Jesus. That's my main object. On what level it is. I don't care. I'm, I want to meet him on his level. 
Not only what I think is right or what somebody says right, I want to know what God thinks is right. That's right. If he said he's the same yesterday and forever, I want to see him on that level. If I have to preach to a bunch of posts and eat soda crackers and drink branch water, I still want the gospel. I want Christ on the level that Christ would come. She gets in there and throws all that softness out. Every time them little eagles start to sit down, they're on a bra. <laughs> it's kind of sticky. She, that's why, uh, de- let the devil, as long as everybody, oh, did you get saved last night? Yes, uh, yes, I did. That's, oh, I'm so happy for that. But you start living the life directly, say, holy roller, phone and toe. Oh, I see what group you're with. See, he lets you stick once in a while. He don't want you to get accustomed to this world, you see. He wants you to get, that mother don't want them chickens to, uh, them eagles to ever become chickens. She wants them to get out of that nest. No matter if they're in the rock or where they are, she's got something better for them. God's got something better for the church. Don't just set it down. I'm a Pentecostal. Somebody said one time, said, Brother Branham, an old man down in Arkansas, he had been healed. He's walking around the next day with his crutches. He had been selling pencils on the street for years and years, walking around with a big sign. I don't need him anymore since Jesus came to me. Going around, and that night you stand up in the audience and about like this at the Robinson Memorial Auditorium in Little Rock, and he said, Just a minute, Brother Branham, when I was preaching. He said, Just a minute. He said, You know, when you preach, he was a Nazarene. He said, You know, you preach just like a Nazarene. And then I noticed most of the people here are Pentecostal. And now somebody tells me you're a Baptist. I don't understand it. Oh, I said, that's easy. I'm a Pentecostal Nazarene Baptist. That's just exactly it. Yes, sir. Oh, brother, damn brand. I used to sit there when we drive the cattle up in the mountains with my knee across an old saddle horn there. And watch that ranger watching those cattle coming through. Ours was a tripod. Grimes is up there with a diamond key bar. Many of them different bars and different Brands went through. The ranger didn't pay much attention to the brand. He watched the blood tag. Amen. 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 That's what God's going to watch. He's watching the blood tag. He don't care what brand you got on you. Why? Wow. Nothing can go in that pasture but a thoroughbred Hereford. And nothing can enter the gates of heaven but a born again to the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care what you do. How intellectual you are or how good a preacher you are or how good a... Church member, you are, except you're born through the blood of Jesus Christ with a blood tag on you, you'll never go in. That's just all there is to it. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. That's all. He'll let you in when the blood tag's right. God will watch the blood of his own son on the church. This old mother eagle, she watches them little eagles. Oh, every time. They can't sit down. It's just everywhere. It's just thorns, thorns, thorns. Now there's something else has to be done with that Pentecostal church in that nest. So they won't be nest bound. That's all right. Now, I'm not kicking against organizations now. Don't get that in your mind. But I'm trying to say, just don't let that be the stopping place. Amen. You're fine. I like the organizations. I belong to every one of them. See? Sure I do. <laughs> yes, sir. I was born into it. <laughs> every once in the church, I was born in there. But it, just don't stop at that. Just don't stop at that uh, organization. Go right on with God till you, till you get out there to solo fighting. Amen. Now, the first thing you know, when the old mother's decided... She's going to give her children a little experience. Now they're joining the church and everything's fine, but it begins to stick it. There's something wrong. Then the old mother comes up there before the nest one day. She looks them little fellows over and there's a lot of loose feathers on them. She knows if she takes them little fellows up in that air with them loose feathers, they'll break their neck. And I tell you, if the Pentecostal church don't get a good cleaning up, they're going to break their neck too. You just remember that. There's too many loose feathers. That's what's the matter. You know what she does? She gets up on the nest and she takes her big wings and begins to fan them like that. Oh, you never stood behind a plane before. Do you find out loose feathers fly every way when that rushing mighty wind begins to sweep through them little fellers' feathers? I tell you, the church needs a nest shaking today with a mighty rushing wind to take all the world out of the Pentecostal church where we can solo. We need another old time gospel, Holy Ghost, God born, sent revival. That's exactly right. We don't need a new president. We got one, a dandy. We don't need new mayors of the city, whatever. That's not, that's their business. But what we need as ministers is to preach the gospel and bring the church back to Pentecost again. Bring it back to the eagle experience again. That's what the church needs. That's, oh, just, you don't want to be chickens. You're eagles. You have to take eagle food. And here she was sitting there knocking all those little old 
feathers out. Because if she don't, they, if they're not, they got enough feathers left to take the flight, she won't take them until all them little old baby feathers blow out of them. Then she comes up there and she screams. She's ready to give them some experience then. She throws her great big 14-foot wings out like that. Those little eagles reach over, climb up, and she's talking to them then because they have heard her voice. They know to trust her. How mighty she Say, now, children, I'm going to take you on a solo flight. Each one goes over and gets his little foot and catches into the wing, puts his little bill against one of them feathers. Why, well, can't pull out. It'll hold 50 eagles from the power of that feather in his wing. And he holds across the feather like that, and the old mother lifts her wings like that, flies off the rock. Here she goes, sailing up, 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 till she gets way up into the blue, way high. Them little fellers have never been there before. Oh, they're just having them a wonderful time. The first thing you know, you know what she does? Turns right over and shakes them every one off. <laughs> they're eagles. They ought to know how to fly. That's exactly right. She shakes them right off with herself. Well, some of them little fellers, she hollers, All right, children, you're eagles. Fly. As long as you say, Well, I've gone to this church. I tell you, I don't know about that. You'll never fly. <laughs> All right. You knew you could shuck off one time up in the air. Them little eagles begin to fly. Shall I flop your wings, children? Just keep flopping your little faith up and down. You're high enough now that you won't hit the earth. You know what? Then what she does, she darts out to one side to watch them. She sails right around. And here they are just, just exactly like a Pentecostal revival. Just topsy-turvy one over one or the other. Just a flop in the hole they can have. They don't care. They got supreme confidence. In their mammy that's out there watching them. How ought the church ought to do? If one of them little eagles get out of balance, she sweeps right down with them big wings and picks him up and buries him up in the grace again. Now, that's not bad to teach him. That's the Bible. So it brings him right back up, shakes him off again, let him start anew. Amen. Amen. Them eagles has got confidence in their mother, supreme confidence that that mother will help them and bear them up again. Bear up on the wings of an eagle. And take him up there and shake him off again. Let him start again. If, if, if I fall or if I fail, let me rise and try again, O oh Lord. Go again. God will lift you right back up. Take you up there and shake you off again. Try to balance yourself. Just keep going. Just keep flopping until you learn to fly. Oh, my. Poor old chicken don't know nothing about that. He don't know a thing about that because he's never been up there. None of his ancestors up there. All he knows is jar in church and sit down. In the barnyard. He don't know much about it. One time a man was setting a hen. And he couldn't find enough eggs. So he found an eagle's nest and climbed up and got the eagle's egg. And put it under the hen. And when that bunch of brood hatched. That eagle was a funny looking little fellow to the rest of them chickens. That's just about the way it comes. One out of every setting. Just about the way it happens. That's true. And here he was a funny looking little fellow. He couldn't understand the clucking of the hen. The old hen out there in the manure piles in the yard. <laughs> We're going to have a social supper tonight. We're going to do all this like that. Cluck, cluck, cluck. The days of miracles is past. There is no such a thing as divine healing. Cluck, 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 cluck. Eating that dirty stuff of old bunk hole parties and games and stripped off clothes and everything like that. Televisions and all that kind of nonsense. Hallelujah. That little fellow was an eagle. That didn't set with him. It made him vomit to smell it. He's my, I never make that. Walking around, my, he's a funny looking little guy. He said, oh, come on, honey, we're going to have a great big party tonight. We're going to serve. <laughs> he didn't want none of that stuff. He walked around and said, well, well, I'm an odd looking duck here. And I'll tell you one thing, brother. When a man is born to be a child of God, old creeds and denominations will never satisfy him. No, sir. The things of the world, basketball games and parties and, and bunco games and all these kind of entertainments that... The modern churches do today in our day. No wonder they grieve. Where is God? They grieve God away from them. That's exactly the right. Amen. Yes, sir. Chickens like that kind of stuff, but eagles don't. Yeah. That's not eagle food. Hallelujah. Here he walked around there, and my, all the, all of them at, looked around. They'd all run over this place. And this, she'd scratch out some of the dirtiest looking stuff. And they'd run over and eat it. Mm. Oh, come on, come on, join with us. But he's a separated person. <laughs> yes, sir. He didn't want none of that stuff. Didn't look right to him. Didn't smell right. Didn't have the right kind of a atmosphere around there. He didn't like that at all. He said, no, no. And one day, the old mother eagle come hunting him. I'm so glad that he come for me. 
He flew over the barnyard to look down there and he seen his little one. And he screamed. He said, Honey, you're not a chicken. You're mine. When he heard that voice, he looked up. That sounded good. His nature was an eagle. His nature. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday today, and forever. Amen, he hollered back. Love not the world or things of the world. If you do the love of God, it's not in you. Amen, he said. That sounds good. When I come back over, honey, you can jump. Only thing you got to do is flop your little wings of faith. It'll pack you. <laughs> Hamlet, go get out of it, mammy. Just flop your wings, that's all. You'll come right on out. Just take your faith and step right out on it. Go to popping because you are a eagle to begin with. Amen. Sir, you're an eagle to start with. Flop your wings. She's sailing around above. You look like one of mine down there where you're at. And the little fella jumped on his feet and bounced up and down four or five times, you know, like he clapped his little hands or wings together like that. And the first thing you know, he got his feet off the ground. Hallelujah. But you know what he did? This little eagle, she sat right down on top of a post in the barnyard, right in the middle of a big Pentecostal denomination. <laughs> you know what? Mother Eagle flew around again. She looked at her, slacks on, bobbed hair, painted face. Said, honey, you look more like a Pentecostal buzzard than you do a Pentecostal eagle. You'll have to wash yourself a little more than that, or I can't even get you. Right. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I want to share something off of you. Let me tell you, brother, why the Pentecostal church needs a cleaning from the pulpit to the... That's exactly right. Laying aside the weight. No wonder we can't have revival eating the vulture things, staying home at night to watch some favorite television instead of going to your prayer meeting service. Amen. Wearing these old women, wearing these clothes and men taking a little sociable drink and telling dirty jokes and things among one another. What do you mean, man? God can't never reach down in a mess of stuff like that. You may have the biggest churches there is in the country. You may have more money than you've ever got. That ain't got one thing to do with it. You might associate with what you call a better intellectual crowd. You might wear a better suit of clothes. But, brother, God wants a clean heart and clean head. He wants a cleaned up church. Then he can show himself. When God spreads forth his great wings and shows his power, that he's the same yesterday and forever, the eagle said, Yes, Lord, that's what I want. I'm fighting for it. I'm coming to it. Sure, he's the same yesterday. Today and forever. My word at our time go. I just feel like preaching now. I just, uh, but, uh, but we just. Uh, where, oh, what the Pentecostal church needs is a cleaning up. It needs a washing out. It needs a scouring out, a sanctifying. People, you are not of the world. You don't pattern yourself like other people. Don't try to pattern like some movie star. You're a daughter of God. Amen. You're a son of God. Don't try to be a Matt Dillon or somebody. Don't try to be a Peabody Ernie or what his name is or some of those men. You're not. Love not the things of the world. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. I know, brother, that's sickening. That makes you sick. My little southern mammy used to tell me that all of us little kids would come on Saturday night and big old cedar tub and she'd pour water in it and, and get the, the little one to bath and I was the last of ten. And I got the last bath in the same tub of water. Just warm it up a little bit. And then Mama would take, we had some pour, we, she'd take old meat skins and render them out to get the, the grease out of them. We couldn't afford to buy lard and so she'd get the grease out of it to put in the cornbread and we had black eyed peas, turnip greens and cornbread. And, and we got, or we had an allergies and things and Mama every Saturday night would give us a dose of castor oil. I, I can't even stand the stuff yet to smell it. When I come to her holding my nose, I'd say, Mama, don't, 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 I just can't stand it. She gave me a good word. Said, son, if it don't make you sick, it don't do you no good. That's worth the preaching this word. If it don't sicken you up right here, so it'll make your spiritual gastronomics go to work and it won't do you any good. That's right. The word makes you free and free indeed cuts loose. Do you believe it? The church needs a Holy Ghost revival. It needs a house cleaning. These are eagles. Don't feed them on chicken food. 
There are eagles. Get them out there where they have to fly or die. That's all. And God will watch over his heritage. He's never too far away. He's always near to lift you up. Do you believe that? Yeah. Let us bow our heads then for a word of prayer. How many like to be remembered now and say, Lord, be merciful to me. Give me eagle thoughts. Give me eagle desires. Give me eagle life. Let me fly in your blue, yonder Lord, where all things are possible to them that believe. Make a faith in me. Let my wings grow. Let my uh, muscles around my wings grow till I can really see Jesus. Oh, God bless you. Heavenly Father, oh, the, the message might sound critical, Lord, but it wasn't meant that way. It was just in a little only way I have to let the people know, Lord, what that I believe that you're trying to get to them, to shake the church, this great heritage of yours, this great Pentecostal church, great church as it is. You've shaken all kinds of gifts around them, all kinds of signs and wonders. And they set back like chickens sometimes. Oh, God, let them see their eagles. They can fly. Just take their faith and fly away from it. Get away from this old saying, it can't happen. There's nothing to it. Oh, God, I pray that you'll bless everyone here this afternoon and make each one of them hover closely under Jehovah's wings. Grant it, Father. I present them to you in Jesus' name, my son. Amen. It's up to the Lord God what he does. Now we're going to have the prayer line so we can get out here. I want you to go to church tonight. God bless you. You love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's just sing one more time so I can hear it in Tulsa, this great big group. I love him. I love him because he first loved me. Purchased my salvation on Calvary. Ah, let's make it ring out now to him. The message is over. Let's just worship him. I love him. Be Just kind of bow our heads and raise our hands while the crowd's getting quiet now. I love you. I love you. Draw nigh, Lord. Be You who have prayer card number one, raise up your hand. Stand up to your feet if you can. Prayer card number one. H. H number one, raise up your hand. Prayer card number one, raise up. Are you the, are you the person, lady? H number one, come out over here. H number two, all sheep of Israel. Is that right? Now, how many tribes of people are there on the earth? Three tribes, Ham, Shem, and Japheth's people. Now, that was the Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan, which is half Jew and Gentile. Did you notice how many know that Jesus gave Peter the keys at Pentecost before? That's right. He opened the keys to the kingdom at Jerusalem to the Jews. Is that right? Philip went out and baptized them down in Samaria that the Holy Ghost did not come upon them because Peter had the keys come down and laid his hands upon them and they received the Holy Ghost, the Samaritans. Is that right? Up at the house of Cornelius, who was called up there? Peter. Since then, there's nothing else said about it. The, all generations had the, all tribes had the gospel open. Ham, Shem, and Japheth's people. Now, if you notice, I want you to watch. Now, there was two classes of people, two of the tribes looking for a Messiah. Who was it? it? Who was it? Was Jew and Samaritan. But Gentiles, we, we were the Anglo-Saxon. We had a club owner back worshiping an idol. We wasn't looking for no Messiah. 
Now, I'm just holding your attention, if I can, till the, the prayer line gets ready so they can all be ready to come into their line. Now, we wasn't looking for no Messiah, so we didn't receive any. So then, but now, to those that were looking for him, he appeared to them. Now, how many believe that? Well, now, now, after they rejected their Messiah, then, remember, he went to the Jews. What kind of sign did he show? He knew the secret of their heart. Now, what did the Orthodox Church say about him? He's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. Jesus said, I forgive you for that, but someday the Holy Ghost will come to do the same thing, and to speak against it will never be forgiven in this world, neither in the world that is to come. Is that right? Now watch. He performed that sign before the Jews. He performed it to the Samaritans, but never to the Gentiles. You can't find one case of it. No, sir. But before he left, I said to the woman, now watch this woman, that prostitute we call her, she know more about God than half the preachers in the United States. That's right. They're so intellectual, they, they don't have no room for supernatural spirit. Many of them are fine Christian supernatural brothers, but some of them are still chicken. Amen. Then she come around, and that little woman, he went out and sent his disciples away. Stay down here because the Samaritan people were looking. How many knows the Samaritans are looking for the, the Messiah? Do you believe that? Well, let me quote you St. John 4. Now, a woman come out to well, a woman of Samaria. He said, uh, now while I'm at from 40 to 50 in age, 40 to 50, take your place. All right, age, 40 to 50. That's all the prayer cards. Take your place. Now, notice, when he went out to the well that day and sat down, and the disciples went in town to buy some vittles, while they were gone, a lovely-looking woman come walking out with a pot on her head, and she let the window down to get some water, and she heard somebody say, bring me a drink. And she looked over, and she seen a Jew. He wasn't but 30, but the scripture said he looked 50. How many knows that? You're a man not over 50 years old. And say that you've seen Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. That's right. So he said, you're not over 50 years old. And there she was sitting there at the well. There was Jesus sitting in a panoramic something like this. And he said, bring me a drink. They had a segregation then, like they used to have down south. The colored and white. He said, uh, it's not customary for you being a Jew, ask me a woman, Samaria said. He said, woman, listen now, what I'm telling you. You're missing. Woman, if you knew who you were talking to, if you knew, you'd ask me for a drink. Now, I'd give you water as you don't come here to draw. She said, the well's deep. You have nothing to draw with. And then the conversation went on. What was he doing? Contacting her spirit. That's the same thing I'm doing right now to you, trying to hold your attention He said, bring me a drink. The conversation went on until he found what her trouble was. How many knows what it was? She's living in adultery. So he said, woman, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, that's right. You've had five. And the one you're living with is not your husband. Now, did that woman, under her conditions, being as we think her a prostitute, woman of ill fame, listen to what she knows about the Scripture. She never called him like the preachers did, Beelzebub, a fortune teller, a devil. And anybody knows that fortune telling is of the devil. So what is a fortune teller? Is a perverted subject. The devil can't create nothing. He's, if he's a creator, he can make him a world. But he can pervert what God's created. Do you get that? Here. Here. It sounds flat in a mixed audience. A man can marry a, a wife and live with her as a wife. And the bed is undefiled. The same act with another woman, he's gone. See? It's a perverting the thing that's right. You understand what I mean? Satan perverts. A fortune teller is a perverted seer of God. Perverted. Into the devil's realms. And then, notice, she didn't call him that. She said, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. How many know she said that? A whole lot different from what them preachers said said, I perceive, perceive that you're a prophet. Now watch, listen. We know, we Samaritans, we're taught. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. Was that the sign of the Messiah? Was it? We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. But who are you? Jesus said, I'm he that speaks to you. She run into the city. 
and told the man, Come see a man who's told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? But never did he do it to the Gentiles. But did he promise to the Gentiles? Why? We've got 2,000 years of training just like the Jews and Samaritans had. Of training, looking for a Messiah. Now Jesus said, As it was in the days of Lot and Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Now watch, in the days of Sodom, they had a revival with the intellectuals, with Lot. A modern Billy Graham went out there and preached the gospel, blinded them. But watch what Abraham was a church elected, Pentecostal, called out, separated from the things of the world. Now there's Pentecostal in the Methodist church. There's Pentecostals in the Baptist church. Pentecostals is not a denomination, it's an experience that anybody can have that wants it. The denominational Pentecostal has no knobs, no, none of the Pentecostal blessings. It's a Catholic can have it. You're Pentecostal because you got a Pentecostal blessing in your heart. So Abraham was a called out. And this angel had set up there with Abraham. And after the angel left, he called him Lord, Elohim. I mean, knows that Elohim was a great Jehovah God. Sure, the Lord God. And he sat with his back turned to the tent. Watch what he said to Abraham. Now, he's a stranger, never been there before. He said, um, Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? How did he know that he had a wife, and how did he know her name was Sarah? Now, the Bible said that Abraham told him that she was in the tent behind him. In the tent behind him. He said, Abraham, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life that I promised you this child. I'm going to give it to you. And Sarah, not out loud, but laughed within herself. And the angel with his back to the tent said, why did Sarah laugh? See that? Jesus said that would take place amongst the Gentiles just before the end time. The Messiah would drop down in the form of the Holy Ghost. What was the first thing the Messiah started doing when he was baptized at Jordan with the Holy Ghost? What did he do? Started healing the sick. What was his last sign and his sign before he turned from him? That sign right there. What did the Pentecostal revival bring? Healing the sick. Miracles and signs. What is the last thing? Here it is. How many out there are sick and doesn't have a prayer card? Raise up your hand. Have faith and believe. Somebody says, what about it, Brother Branham? That Spirit of God, that one who makes a promise, cannot fail with the promise. You without prayer card, I'll turn my back to you. You pray. And if God be God, if his answer is true, and I've told you the truth through these weeks, that this is the sign of his close appearing. Any civilized, normal mind knows that we're at the end of something. Civilization can't stand any longer. She's just weaving and shaking. What's it waiting for? It's, it's way past due, as it was in the days of Noah, long-suffering. It's lapped over time for the elect's sake. It's way past, but God's waiting to get his church in order. He's waiting on you and I. May he grant the blessing. You pray. When a woman touched the hem of his garment, some of you women out there now, let this be like a Bible story. Some of you women, it believes now and believes that you got faith enough to believe God. Believe that whatever God has said is true. And there was a little woman touched the border of his garment. And when she touched his garment, he turned around and said, Who touched me? Who touched me? And they all denied it. Said, Well, everybody's touching you. Peter rebuked him and said, Everybody's touching you. Why did you say that like that? He said, But I perceive that I have gotten weak. That's the right translation. Virtue's gone out of me in virtue strength. How many knows that? Virtue's gone from him. And he looked around over the crowd till he found the little woman. And he told her that her blood issue had stopped because her faith had made her well. Is that right? The Bible said that he's right now a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Do you new newcomers believe that? Now remember, healing, if he was standing here with this suit on that he gave me, he couldn't heal you if you come here to the platform. Lord, will you heal me? You know what he'd say to you? I've already done that. I was wounded for your transgression. With my stripes you were healed. Salvation and healing is a finished product. It's your faith to accept it. Now, he would do something to prove that he was Messiah. Now, these things don't prove that I'm any Messiah. I'm a sinner saved by grace. 
And no matter how much God would anoint me, he's got to anoint you too. It won't work just with me. It takes you to make it work. No matter how much the Holy Spirit you get on me, it's got to be on you too. But if he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, and the Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he'll act the same. He's here in us. Do you believe it? Now, everybody, keep your seat. Be reverent. Pray. And may the Lord God grant that this Lord please these lovely people. I'm, Lord, you know my purpose of being here. And I pray that you'll let them see, if they never again, let them know that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Let them know that these cruel messages seemingly stirring them up not to act smart, not to be my, in myself, but because you have anointed it and said so. Prove it, Lord. I've spoke for you. Speak for me, Lord, that my words are true because they come from you. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive your call. Don't miss your day. How many of this prayer line is strangers to me? Raise up your hand. All of you are strangers. All of you that's out there are strangers. Raise up your hands. I don't know a person but Gene Gold sitting here. Pot Tyler right there. It's the only ones that I see. My son standing back there. It's the only one that I know. That woman sitting there rubbing her eyes with the red hat on, sitting right there. Do you believe Jesus heard you when you asked him to heal them, sign them, headache? Do you believe he heard you? You were praying about it, wasn't you? If that's right, stand up on your feet. If that's the truth, put up your hand. If I don't know you and you don't know me, put up the other hand, both hands. Ma'am, you've been in my revivals before, but I mean I don't know you. No, all right. All right? Now they have ceased. You can go home and be well. I want to ask you people something. What did that woman touch? Here's my hand. I never is, remember... A, She's been in a meeting. Now, you'd say, how about somebody up there in the balcony down in here? Maybe in a meeting sometime before. I would never know who you were. Only thing I know that you're just, you were just here at the meeting. And there she is. She touched something. And what did, I said a while ago, that pillar of fire. Don't you see if, how many's got the picture of it now? They got it here at the meeting. Now, it looks like a pillar of fire, doesn't it? And now the life of it, what does it produce? The, not me now. It. What does it produce? The same works that it did when it was in the Son of God. Now it's in adopted sons and daughters of God by the grace of the true Son of God. Right there, sir. You don't get over that heart trouble? Believe that God will make you well? Sitting right there? You were looking, wondering, and all at once a little funny feeling trickled over you. That's right. I don't know you, do I? You don't know me and I don't know you. If that's right, raise up your hand. You believe your heart trouble's gone? Wave your hand. All right? Then it's gone. Yeah. You believe? Here's a lady sitting right out in here. Can't you see that light over that woman? She's got golf by her trouble. She's going to miss it. God help. Miss Small... You believe God healed you that go all better trouble? Amen. Then stand on your feet. You had more faith than you thought you had. I do not know the woman. That was God's grace. If we're strangers, wave your hands like this, lady. I don't know you. But what he told you is it the truth. Raise up your hand. What he said. All right. Then have faith and go home and be well. If you can believe. This lady sitting right here with abdominal trouble in the abdominal. Yes, Effie is the one I'm talking about. Stand up, Effie. <laughs> Was that your trouble? I do not know you. If that's true, raise up your hands. I've never seen you in my life. God in heaven knows that. Go home. It's over. God bless you. If you die in your sins, it won't be God's fault. You might be ever so loyal to a church, but a sinner is an unbeliever. 
have faith in God. All right. Now, these people here, this is a prayer line to lay hands on the sick. Are you going to believe it regardless? Now, that's people without a prayer card where the line of discernment is, out there without a prayer card. Now, the rest of you start believing. Don't move around. See, each one of us is a spirit. See? Each one of you is a spirit. Did you know that? If it wouldn't, you'd be dead. So, it's your spirit I'm talking about, not you. It's your spirit. Come here, lady. You believe me to be God's servant. Yes, sir. We're strangers to each other. Yes, sir. We don't know one another. If that's right, so the audience up in the balcony will understand. Just raise up your hand. We're strangers, never met. Here's a panoramic. Bent, the first one in the line was a woman. Here's St. John 4. A man and a woman meets the first time in life. If this is the Spirit of Christ here between us, then he'll work the works of Christ. Please don't move. And you just ruined it. Uh, you, you hurt others. See, I have control of every one of them. I'm trying to help you. Be real quiet and reverent. Or if the Lord God will tell me something about you, if I come up here, perhaps you're sick, you might not be, but if you are, and I come here and just laid my hands on you and said, you're, go get well, lady, you could believe that, because that's, that's true. But if the Holy Spirit stood here, and what if, if this was the Lord Jesus wearing this suit standing here, and you'd say, heal me, heal me, Lord, he'd say, I've already done it. But he'd do something like he did when he was back here before, like he did the woman at the well, to let you know that that's who, How did he make her know? By telling her something that was in her life. Is that right, audience? Amen. All you newcomers? He'd tell something that was in her life. Now, if he'll tell something that's in your life, uh, like he did to Simon Peter, or like he did to somebody in the Bible, the way he did, then that'd give you a lot of faith. Would it give every one of you faith to believe? Now, here it is, Brown. not even behind some black curtains, not some devil's haunt, but right here on the platform with you, out of words of the Bible. It may be a little upset in theology, but it's a scripture just the same. If I could help you and wouldn't do it, I'd be an imposter. I wouldn't be worthy to stand here beside this Bible. If I could help you and wouldn't, I can't help you. Only thing I can do is to make you realize something that Christ is here to heal you, make you well if you're sick. You are sick. You're bothered with a lady's trouble, the female trouble. That's right. If that's right, raise up your hand so that you'll, not, you'll know what I'm not guessing. Just a minute. Put something on your heart. And just pray to yourself in your heart with whatever you want God to do. Yeah, you got something on your heart right now. It's your husband. Amen. It's your husband. You believe God can tell me what's wrong with him? Yes, sir. It's something wrong in the brain. Yes, sir. It's caused like a hardening of the artery in the brain. Yes, sir. That is true. That's what it is. That's right. If God will tell me who you are, will it make you have a lot of faith? You believe it with all your heart? Yes, sir. Nancy Gillespie, go home. Jesus Christ heals you and your husband and makes you oh, take that handkerchief too. That's true, isn't it? Go on your road. Now, do you believe God? Just have faith, don't doubt. Now I'm going to ask this great church here if you will pray with me for these people. That's somebody's mama, somebody's papa, somebody's sweetheart, somebody's husband. Pray. Don't move around, please. You just, you're just ruining the meeting. Hold real still and pray. We'll be dismissed in 10 minutes if you'll just keep, just keep reverent. Come, lady. If I don't say one word and just pray for you, you believe it? Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal her in Jesus. Come, my brother, believe with all your heart. God, Our Heavenly God, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, make him well. Amen. God bless you, my brother. My wife's there. got no car. All right, that won't make a bit of difference, sir. Amen. Not up sorry. Right. I know what's wrong with you, but there's no need to tell you. You think would it help you if I told you? No, wouldn't help you, all right. But anyhow, your heart trouble left you when you left there, so just go on your own. Come, sir. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, I pray that you are healed. Amen. Believe now. Have faith now, sister. Come like all this. Look, there's nearly 3,000 people here praying for you. In the name of Jesus, may she be healed. Granted. Praise Come. Hallelujah. Sir, that arthritis will get you one day if you don't have faith now. Do you believe it now? Then go and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, heal our sister. 
Come believe in me. I, everyone believe and pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. Come. Our brother, if we had visions for everyone, it would just, it, I, they'd have packed me off the platform. See, I'd go down. But that you might know, go ahead and eat your supper tonight. It'll taste real good. The stomach <laughs> trouble's left you. See. Go on, All right, come on. I do that for a purpose, throw myself off, friends, because uh, visions, how many knows that Jesus said virtue's gone from me? I'm right now, i just real, real weak. Oh, Father, I pray that you'll heal our sister in Jesus' name, friend. Come, sister dear, don't doubt now. Come believing with all your heart. Oh, Lord, in Christ's name, heal our sister. Give her her victory, Lord. Come, my sister. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that lead. In Jesus' name, may she be healed. Amen. Come, sister. Praise. Your back trouble left you, so you know you're going to go. Hallelujah. You believe? Amen. Amen. See, why, why, listen, I'll ask you. Listen, friends, when them people come by here, the Bible, it says they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover is just as much as telling them. Don't you believe that? Amen. Certainly you believe. Look here, sir. You believe me to be his servant? Now, there's a woman I stopped a while ago. You're a man. You believe that God can tell me your troubles and, yes, and make you well? well you got five different things. Right? Yes, sir. Well, you, your stomach troubles, one thing is bothering you a bit. That's stomach, right. Kidney, yes, sir. Eyes. Yes, sir. And your prostrate land. That's right. Yes, sir. Because your prostrates makes you nervous, and that's what upsets you. That's exactly right. You think your wife could get well, too, if you believe? All right. If you believe with all your heart, then your wife can be healed. She's sick. Yeah. Nervousness and upset and weakness and things. You believe with all your heart, now she'll be healed? Go on your road and say, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, and she'll get well too. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll help this, oh Lord, and make it so that his, the glory of God will come upon him and come 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. He come up under the lake. Now, go believing, Mr. Dodd, and believe with all your heart and get well. Come, sir. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal our brother and make him well in Jesus' name. Come, sister dear, believe with all your heart. Oh, God, our Father, I pray that you'll make her well in Jesus' name. Come, brother, bring the little one. Don't doubt now. Just bring him right along like he's coming right under the cross. Lord, I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, sister. Come believing now with all your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'll heal her. Amen. Believe now. Be real. Reverend, believe with all your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she be healed, Lord. Amen. Come, sister, believing with all your heart. Believe that she'll get well now and receive her sight. And all. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. The other night, praying for a little boy about 15, 16 years old, he passed through the little fellow with great faith. I looked at him. I said, of course, you know, son. And, and so he went on out, walked right down there, and a little boy born blind received his sight and screamed back, Oh, brother Branham, I can see you're raising your strain from a baby, water-headed baby, shrink over that much in one night, just passing by. Things are happening. You must believe, oh, see? Amen. You're not chickens. You're eagles. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord, may you be healed for the glory of God. Amen. Come believing. Have in faith. You know, something or another. You know what I'm thinking, friends? I, I'm, not, I'm not scolding people, but I want you to know one thing. We've got too much television in our lives. We want entertainment. We want, God is not soaring these things to entertain you. He wants you to recognize His presence. Them things can happen to everyone, but it would nearly kill. Well, I wouldn't get through the line. Here, come here, lady. You and I are strangers to one another. You think God can tell me what your trouble is? Would, would it help you? Would it help you all if, it, if God said something now to this woman? It's your ear. You believe that God will make it well? Well, thank God, yes. You're scared it's a cancer. It's in your left ear. Is that right? That's right. Well, it was, but it isn't now. Now, look, do you believe God? I do. If God will tell me who you are, will it help you? All right, Ruby Thompson, go home and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. See? Have faith. Come now. Don't doubt. God can tell me your trouble. Would you think it would help you? Then the diabetes... Heart trouble, move on your own and be made well and believe God. Yes, yeah. that's just old age coming to make that. Just go believe that. Oh Lord, I pray that you'll heal our brother and make him well. Amen. God grant it. 
Come, sister dear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she be healed. Amen. Asking God's blessings, how can it fail? In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be, Lord. Amen. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. Amen. Come, brother dear. God bless you. Bring mother out of one. Come on, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Yes. Believe now, the same thing will happen down there if you won't doubt. <clears throat> oh, God, bless this poor dear brother. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you are healing and making well, and let it come to pass that he'll receive his sight to be made well. Through Jesus' name, amen. Have faith now. Don't doubt. I can't heal. He's just here. He's a healer. Don't doubt. Be like blind Bartimaeus. Keep looking for your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this sister be healed. All right. Come, sister dear. Are you believing, everybody? Do you? Something happened. Just a minute. That fellow sitting there, you got asthma, sir. That's right. You was praying. You turned around to say, isn't that wonderful? I'll tell you another thing. They took about two-thirds of your stomach out for stomach trouble. That's right, isn't it? If that's right, wave your hand. And we're strangers to one another. Jesus Christ heals you. Your faith made you well. Go on your own rejoicing. Oh, don't doubt. Believe. All right, lady. You Wait a minute. Now, you're not here for yourself. No. You're here for somebody else. That's right. And your brother is not here. Your brother's not even in the state. He's in St. Louis. That's right. He's in the hospital. Amen. He's got heart trouble. That's right. And he is, has been a minister. Amen. And you thought if I passed by and laid hands on you, that Amen. you would, I wouldn't know what I was talking about. I knew. But I knew. So you go on your road and he's going to get well. <laughs> All right, have faith. Just go ahead. There's another woman in here thinking the same thing right now about a daughter that got killed. Miss Weatherman? Waterman it is. Miss Waterman, believe with all your heart now. Your daughter was taken for a purpose. Don't doubt. Believe God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Come believing now with all your heart. Oh Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, grant the healing of this woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe me. Now look, there's not a medical cure, but there's a heavenly cure. That's right. You believe it? It should be normal and well. Yeah, that's right. Curse, I curse this devil that's done the evil to this child, and I take this curse off of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be a normal child. Amen. It has to be. All right. Go along rejoicing, get well, and eat your supper. Hallelujah. <laughs> right, come, sir, believing with all your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may he be healed. Amen. That struck so many places in the audience. Just a minute. Uh, how many in here has nervous stomach? Anyhow, raise up your hand. It's just so many I can't. See there? Every one of you has got nervous stomach. Stand up on your feet. Here's a way to get rid of it. Stand on your feet just a minute. Stand still, sir. Go believing, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Come now, believe with all your heart. You believe, sister? In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Nervous, always been all your life. That's it. Everybody that's bothered with nervous trouble and kidney, stand to your feet. Get up on your feet, everybody that's got it. Go believing, my brother. Have faith. Stand right down there. Oh, Lord God, I pray thee to have mercy upon our brother and to make him well. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Have faith. You believe now, sister dear? In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she be healed, Father, for the glory of God. Something's happening. Is that all of it, Billy? Yeah, come here, sir. We strangers one another? God knows us both, doesn't he? Oh, it's just happening everywhere. Remember, creatures, my brethren, my precious eagle brothers, when I'm gone from here for weeks, you'll find your congregation testifying of being healed. They're healed, but they don't know it. See? See? It's just happening everywhere. Why couldn't we have this kind of faith to begin with, friends? This is it. Uh, you believe that God can help you? 
You believe God can tell me what's your trouble? You have severe headaches. You have dizzy spells. It's caused by a growth in the neck. That's right. You believe God knows who you are? You're a minister. Your name is Reverend Jack Cole. That's exactly right. Go believe, sir. Every one of these has dizzy spells or has headaches. Stand to your feet. Every person is sick. Stand to your feet. Oh, God. What could happen if it just would? What could take place? Do you believe it? How many believers are here convinced that this thing is the Holy Ghost? Raise up your hands. I can't do those things. Are you believers? Lay your hands on one another and ask the devil to leave the person you got your hands on. Your prayer is as good as mine. Put your hands over on one another. That's right, lady up there. Two birds are left you then. The prostrate trouble left you, brother. You can put your hands down and shout the praises. TV for that little lady sitting right there. It's gone. Forget it. Jesus Christ makes you well. This is it, friends. Let's give God praise. Oh, Lord. You're here. I condemn the devil and all of his works. I condemn every evil spirit. Satan, you are exposed. You are rebuked. In the name of Jesus Christ, I charge thee by the living God. Come out of this audience. You can't make them doubt any longer. The Holy Spirit has made himself real before them. You can't make them doubt any more. Take our hands on one another. Jesus said these signs shall follow them. Jesus 